Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. Here's an update. What's going on with Yellowstone? We got a little discoloration from Old Faithful, but not a lot. The earthquake swarm, which started on Monday, continues for the last four or five years that I've been following Yellowstone. I've never seen a swarm of earthquakes that lasted this long. Got a park ranger down here. Or is it two park rangers talking to some people? And this here is a chart that I've been waiting for. This is from the 16th. They're always a day behind. This is the release of gases that occurred um, when they had that 4.5 earthquake that was downgraded to a 4.4. There's a lot of disinformation out there. Example, up there in Bozeman, Montana, they did an article about the swarm of earthquakes that's been going on. They said that only one person felt that magnitude, 4.5 earthquake. But as of this morning, 110 people did report feeling that. Yeah, um, poor reporting when they said only one person felt it. Today, USGS is admitting to three earthquakes that were a magnitude 2.5 or higher. And we got one there at Yellowstone, um, depth of 10 kilometers, uh, 3.0. 8.9 kilometers and a 2.5 8.2 kilometers when I put it on one day all magnitudes um, They only list four. They're not reporting the earthquakes as they occur They'll probably list the other ones maybe later tonight. You notice here. This was uh, 040 universal time for the 2.5 nothing has been reported today since late last night but yet the earthquakes continue. Look at them all. Now the earthquake that they reported last was this one right here. But see they know there's a lot of them which are probably just as strong as this 2.5 some probably even larger. Like I said I have never seen a swarm of this magnitude last even this long. If Yellowstone does decide to go about 38 million people here in the US will die. And that'll be probably from ash for those outside of the blast zone. Two years ago, Hank Kessler, they moved into the park and kind of spilled the beans about what to expect before an eruption occurred. He said there would be hundreds, if not thousands, of earthquakes a day, some in the magnitude of 4.5 or larger. There would be changes in the geysers. There would be changes in the gases. Now, we had another fellow, what, last week that fell in and got burned. We had another one the year before and one outside the park a year before that. Him and his two dogs were burned. The dogs died. They're hoping that the next eruption, and they know there's going to be another eruption, one they can't say, but they're hoping it'll be a small eruption when one does a cure. He goes on to say that with a small eruption, they hope that it'll be like Mount St. Helens or a small event that would open up. And then the National Park Service did another video about how much warning would we have. He says if it's going to be a small eruption, we're going to have less of a notice. If it's a large eruption, we'll have a longer notice before it happens. He originally stated that we would have about two weeks notice before an eruption. Now they've known for about two years that they get ancient helium-4 coming up, breaking through the surface. He even stated that when they started getting magnitude 2 earthquakes or larger, there was alarms that would go off and he would go out and check everything out. Like I said, he kind of let a lot of information slip and then he retired briefly after. Muchikaku, I believe it is, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, said that a ring of about 1,000 miles would be completely destroyed. So here's the gas charts for Yellowstone Lake. Here was that 4.5 that they downgraded to a 4.4. Here's the chart for Grant. Now this is south of Yellowstone Lake. Now just remember, keep in mind, that we've had earthquake activity going on for almost a week. And Hank Hessler says we will have maybe a two-week window warning that there's going to be an eruption. Um, hopefully it would be a small eruption. There'd be more signs of a small eruption prior to that than there would be for a large eruption. Hank Hessler's words, not mine. Now this is um, the Norris Junction spectrograms. And then I'll go back to Madison River. See how much difference the Madison River area is showing in uh, different activity? 
And this is the chart for the Madison River area showing uplift for the last seven days. Doesn't really look like much. This is the last 30 days. But looking at the larger picture, 2011, this is what it's showing. Here we have Norris Junction. This goes back seven days. See between the 15th and 16th. That's probably when the 4.5 earthquake occurred. Yeah, pop. It just rose. Yeah. Going back 30 days and then going back till 2009. They reset the machine here. The tilt meter showing uplift for Yellowstone Lake going back seven days and then going back 30 days. Going back to 2008. Yeah, they reset the machine here. Stop recording there. We have the highest uplift since 2008. This is Grant going back seven days. And then we got Grant going back 30 days. And Grant going back to 2009. Water temperature at Tantalus Creek. Remember, I told you we're going to keep an eye on this because the water is shallow and the magma that's currently rocking and rolling is deep. Yeah, we got a little bit of a spike there. We also have a small spike at Firehole River at Old Faithful. I'm going to keep an eye on this, see if this trend continues along with these earthquakes. Firehole River near West Yellowstone does not show an increase. Snake River at Moose Pond within acceptable ranges. Flat Creek below Cache Creek. Now, this is near Jackson Hole, Wyoming. That has a slight spike. Yeah, there's a lot of earthquakes. They're not reporting. Like I said, this one right here was the last one they reported. This one here is Maple Creek. In Mary Lake, there's the last earthquake they recorded. Um, I've talked about this monitor here, how they messed with it. They changed it to um, digital. It used to be, you know, like the old tumbler. Um, it would actually show up and down, up and down. We have magma currently moving. There's an earthquake there, there, yeah, there, there. And of course, that's the last one they reported. Old Faithful, the thickening of the lines. Those that follow me know this is indication we have magma on the move. The borehole at Grant, they shut down, removed data. Yeah, you can look at that. Look how thick that is. So you can just imagine what it really is showing censoring information. If you look at the earthquakes that USGS has reported, the earthquakes are following around the rim towards the south of the volcano. As I was saying before about the Bozeman article, they said only one person felt this 4.4. You can see here, 110 people felt it. The largest earthquake Yellowstone has ever had, um, other than the one up there at Earthquake Lake, was in March 2014. That was a magnitude 4.8. But that was outside the park, so they're not counting that one. I'm going to keep an eye on this smoke, see if maybe tomorrow, the day after, it gets even darker or even black again. That would be an indication, too, that the magma is rising. Well, put any thoughts or comments you might have below. Bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.